morning everybody um, so I wanted to take a few minutes just to talk about adding in uh, some surface detail uh, this is just done through ZBrush we'll look at a couple methods including using some VDM brushes that you could easily purchase on ArtStation so we'll take a look at one and I'll link I'll, I'll show you the link to one that that's quite good um, you know I'd share it um, and I could technically share it but they're only three dollars and it's probably worthwhile to support the the artist that uh, took the time to create the pack uh, but it's quite good I've used it myself in the past so anyhow uh, the first thing I want to do is just kind of go over this is a character I started working on at the end of the summer right before when uh, the school year started and it wasn't really meant to be a chimera but it was something I was going to start developing just to coincide with the capstone sculpts that you guys are going to be working on uh, it's not not quite finished uh, the base is almost finished uh, he does have some uh, topology he has UVs um, I didn't get around to separating out the nails and he has these these big fins on the uh, the tail too that I wanted to separate out which I didn't get a chance to do yet either all of the other little spikes and bits are, are all separated out though so that's all all pretty good and overall I'm, I'm, I'm liking the the general silhouette now I, after looking at him now though you know I'm thinking well maybe his chest cavity could be a little bit a little bit wider in through here so I might you know still go in and, and tweak some proportions and things like that but generally I, I'm pretty happy so he's good enough to to start testing some things out with now the first thing I, I just wanted to uh, the first approach would be more of a manual approach now you know arguably this would give you a lot more control over over what you're doing it's just very time consuming and and essentially what you're doing with this approach is using your mask just using a us, using your mask tools so let me zoom in just on on this guy here so using your mask you're just going around that's using the control key and you're just drawing in and this is more for scales you're just drawing in each scale one at a time right now if your character is smaller you know you're lucky because then you'd have fewer scales because they'd be bigger but if your character is larger then you know you could end up with quite a lot of these so the eye would have more though than other areas and I'm just making sure I'm leaving a, a little bit of a gap in between each one if I can do it if I can help it and just kind of going around so what I'll do is I'll I'll just pause the video and I'll just kind of finish off around the eye here all right so I spent a good couple minutes just kind of going around the eye and creating you know a basic pattern leaving a little bit of a gap in between each each scale essentially now uh, just make sure you're not tapping on here because it will smooth out the uh, the mask so just be careful about that we can always harden it though by control alt tapping and that will harden up those lines a little bit I just want to try to avoid this type of thing right here where it's it's kind of going through itself so control alt I can erase erase anything that's kind of merged together here just so I have a nice scale like separation between everything Um, and then like right in here too, right? So let's see. All right, so that th this is one approach. A um, couple of things before doing the scale things. I just want to make sure I, a I've got a layer. So I want to make sure I'm on the right number of polys. Right now I'm on 10 million. You know that's pretty good. If I want something a little bit more, a little bit more detailed though especially if we're going to get him really close now for the chimeras it's unlikely we're going to get that close to be honest to your model you're going to do like a full body turntable you might, you might highlight a couple things like an arm or leg but you're not going to get this close in on an eyeball it's highly unlikely but if you do or if you know you are going to then you are going to want to probably increase that subdivision level so i'll try increasing it and uh hopefully you know we don't have any crashes I should probably save it after I've done this but so control D one more subdivision higher uh, all right, 
what's going on here. I mean, what? Probably because of the mask. Ugh, that's so frustrating. I wish I had done this. Here, let me duplicate this out. So duplicate. Probably because the mask is on, it won't let me subdivide while the mask is actually uh, currently on. Um, that's okay. So I'll just invert this. I'll just show you what I'm talking about with this. And then I might update it after, or um, subdivide it after. So I could use my inflate brush. Remember we added this one in here? And I could just go over this and just start inflating these guys up here. Now there is also a unified inflate that we could look at as well, uh, which is under this tab here. So if I were to undo that, we've got under deformation, down here we've got an inflate here also. And this, this is more of a unified inflate, which is fine, you know, maybe I could still go in and and do a bit more of a custom inflate over some of the bigger areas if I wanted to. Right, I could still go and do this. Now I'm probably gonna wanna smooth some of this out though just a bit. Especially some of these lizards have more rounded, rounded types of shells and things, so. Right, so I'm just kinda smoothing and inflating. And that way we get these nice and compacted together. Very lizard-like, right? And that looks great. Unarguably, you know, that looks quite good. Um, especially, you know, from this distance, it looks pretty good. And then, you know, once we color this and get all the color in the grooves and everything, it's gonna look very good. And as I was mentioning, you know, this, this is time consuming, but this is done, right? Where you would spend like a day or two just going through masking out sections and then just kind of going on to the next area and then continuing on as you go. So that, that is a val valid option that's used quite, quite widely out there. Um, so cool, I'm gonna save this. So file. Save scene as, all right, let me just save. And then, you know, you could just keep going from there. Now, I am getting some pixelation. You can kind of see that just because of the way it was inflated. Well, when you inflate it, you know, it's, it's spreading those polys apart. So you are getting some pixelation as you get closer. So as I was mentioning, I got rid of the mask. I could technically smooth it one more time now. And it's just gonna take a second. There we are, we're up to 41 million. And you can see that a lot of, a lot of those issues have, have kind of gone away there. You know, there's still there's still some of this stuff going on here, but I could always go in and and smooth that up a bit. Now I wonder what would happen if I use my H polish on this stuff here. I just did a H polish over top of that. Nothing good. Nothing good happens from this. <laughs> it kind of it's kind of compressing them down. But you know, maybe that's that's a look you want to go with. I don't know. And then we do need to kind of define some of these these areas just a little bit more, maybe. Cool. It just kind of deflattens or depopsifies some of these. So maybe maybe not all of them needs to. Eat. Maybe we don't need to go over all of them. But all right, cool. And I can always just go and. Uh, did I save that morph target? I can't remember. Uh, let's see here. If I go to my morph brush, so it'd be oh, wherever. No, I didn't. So yeah, that's something I probably should have done as well. Yeah, I don't have a I don't have a morph on there. All right. So I almost feel like I should do that again. Or not, and I don't want to save this as a morph though. So let me let me get rid of this guy. So delete. I do have the duplicate. This is the original one that we created. 
Um, you know what, I'll just redo the uh, the eyes. I do want to subdivide it first though this time. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to create a morph target. So let me just do that. So remember, this is kind of the process we went through in class. That way I can always erase stuff if I need to. So let me just store a new morph target. There we go. Cool. And I'm just going to pause this. I'm going to do this one more time uh, with the inflate. And then we'll continue on. All right. All right. So we're about uh, 10 minutes later. Back to the same spot. I've been working at the higher level, though. I'm going to save those. So I should have probably saved before I unpaused it. But let me just go and save as. Uh, a couple things while it's saving to keep in mind is get lots of reference, right? You need reference to see patterns and how they interconnect, especially around the more movable areas like the eyelids or around the mouth and things like that. That's very important. Um, otherwise, you know, it's probably not going to look right once it's done if you don't do that. Um, another thing is uh, vary, you know, look at variance, uh, especially in those bending areas. You know, there's some there's going to be large areas where it's going to be a very kind of repeated pattern to a certain degree. But again, look, look for variance. Um, all right. So I think I saved that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it. If I can, there we go. And I'll do the same thing. So I'll inflate that out. So, you know, again, I could use this inflate here under deformation. Or I could just manually go over and inflate. But I'm going to probably do a combination of the two just because this only looks somewhat good. All right, so that's, that's kind of done. So let me go over and just manually inflate it as well. And then I'll smooth it up a bit. Because the manually inflating kind of really brings everything together. But we, we do need to smooth it up because there is going to be some horrible intersections if we don't do that. You know, it doesn't have to be this smoothed up but you're going to want to definitely go over and smooth things up. I can see I accidentally didn't separate some spots there, but that's okay. You can always go in with a damn standard, maybe. smoothing while I go. Cool. And again, that looks pretty, pretty darn good. If it's too much, we could always turn down the layer, right? Because it is being recorded on, on a layer. So we could always reduce that down eventually if it's if it's a bit much. But I think that's that's pretty good. So you know, uh, that took ten minutes. So, uh, you know, spend the week, which is worth it. And then going through and then manually doing uh, things around the main areas, right? The main areas. Now, there are some things we could do to cheat. Um, well, not really cheat, but we can use some of these VDMs, as I mentioned as well, uh, that could help get bigger, bigger zones uh, done for us. Um, so, and we could also use, uh, play around with some of the different types of brushes. So, you know, this is more for scales. Let's say I wanted to do skin. Well, there are some alphas and you can make your own alphas. Uh, what you could do like some fine cracks or things like that, or, or this one is a bit more kind of vein like, uh, but what we could do is go over this with a finer, a finer spray, but not, not with the inflate. Let me go to my dam standard. There we are. And if I were to go in and turn on an alpha for this, so right now if I were to sculpt, you know, I would get this type of thing, right? And 
because my polygon because the polygons are so high it does take a couple seconds to undo it doesn't take any time to paint which is great but it does take a little bit of time to undo so I could just go over and kind of just ran it very lightly but just kind of go over it this way right we're getting some really nice kind of wrinkle uh, you know elephant like uh, rhino like out in the sun too long type of uh, skin textures from this which is great um, and again, it's just by very lightly going over the surface, right? Just back and forward. I'm just kind of randomly going over. And again, it does a really good job of creating a randomized skin pattern. So you really don't need like a, a detailed alpha that, or to project on something like say from texture XYZ just to get, you know, a standard kind of crack skin. You could just use some very simple alphas. Um, another thing you could do, um, you know, and this is probably the better approach because you can be very, very specific as you're going over it. Uh, but as another thing you could do if you wanted to create this kind of skin look is use the spray brushes. So we got color spray and spray. They both do very much the same thing. Uh, and if I go over this again, now I might want to turn down my intensity here. But if I go over this, I can very quickly, very, very quickly kind okay. of, Oh, I think I activated Google. Now, so Google can improve. It would help to know how satisfied you are with my response. Well, zero. How would you rate it? If one's the word. Ugh, all right. I don't even think I said the G word <laughs> to bring up the assistant. But you can see here with the spray, I'm getting actually a really good result uh, without even having to do a lot of extra work. So this is very good for, for getting the finer skin details, right? Now, once we get into color, there, there's some really cool techniques we can do to really bring out the indents and the raised surfaces. So, you know, you don't need to go too, too far in, right? Now, just to give you kind of a preview of what I'm talking about here, if I were to go into my standard brush and I'm gonna switch off my sculpting. So I've turned off the sculpting at the top here and I'm just gonna turn on just the RGB. So that's just color information. And these are things that we're gonna to wanna to add to our, our custom uh, tab as well, but I've torn off my brush menu and just docked it over here. And near the bottom, we've got this thing here, auto masking. Now this only works once you've actually gone through the subdivision workflow. So like cavity mask, you can't do that on a DynaMesh model. Uh, but, but once, because we are in kind of this workflow now, what I can do is I can use the cavity mask. Now this is awesome. Again, this is when we get more into color information, but just to show you here how we can bring out our details. So negative cavity mask will paint into the cracks and a positive will paint the surface. So usually I'll just go through and I'll, I'll maybe flood the surface as a uh, mid color, like a mid lighter color. So flood, object, fill object. Um, now, again, we've got, we do have our, our layers on, so that, that's gonna cause some problems perhaps which is, I don't think that's what's happened here, but let me see. Let me just fill that in again. Brush, color, fill object. That's weird, huh? It doesn't want to fill. Hmm. Let me turn cavity mask off. And I'm just going to just paint over this very quickly. Just to bring, bring some color back into this. This is the problem with um, 40, 41 million polys. I'm going to go down one level, so shift D, back down to 10. Just be a lot faster to, to go over this now. back up so D give it a second all right so like even these lighter areas here so if I were to go into a darker color here and turn my cavity mask back on as I paint over this and um, I think I've got 
steady stroke on. Let me just turn this off. Lazy mouse, sorry. Let me turn it off for a sec. How's it go over this uh, with a darker color? Now I think my colors got all messed up here somehow. There we go. How's it go over this? You can see that we're getting kind of a nice, it's kind of like that dry brush effect where we're kind of bringing out some of the details just through through this. Um, and then usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll do kind of a couple layers of this. So I'll go in, and I'm not asking you guys to, to do this yet, Just but just so you know, you don't have to push too deep with some of these details because you can still bring them out with the coloring. Uh, so if I go into my smooth, I might turn off my sculpting smooth. I'm just going to do RGB smooth. Maybe reduce the intensity of this so that I'm not completely smoothing it to gray. And then I can start going over this and start blending things in. So from a distance, it's going to look more like a subsurface-y kind of effect. And then I can just go back over it again and just very lightly kind of go over, go over things. And just kind of repeat the process. So you get a kind of a nice kind of layered effect. You know, you can see that you're getting, even with the lighter strokes, this kind of level of all that details coming back in with, with the other brushing. All right, so I digress. Let me turn that off and let me go back into a regular color. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so <coughs> I'm going to pause. All right, so that, that's a good option. Again, using the, um, uh, I guess I was on the damn standard here, so let me just go back to, to that. Damn standard. Uh, again, with the spray or an alpha or a combination of both. Again, that's that's great for for getting you know that that kind of skin that skin pattern, right? So that one's a good one. Let me let me get rid of this though. I don't need. I don't think I really need this. You can also invert the brush too if you want more raised details, right? Or you can go back and forth between raised and and lower details if you needed that. And you can always smooth that out too. So let me turn on my, my just my regular smooth. I can go over and start smoothing stuff out if I wanted to, you know, get the hints of this stuff. And I could always go back over it again if I need to. Right, so it's a matter of, of layering it. That's, that's how you get kind of more of that natural that natural look that you would get in the scans, right? It's almost exactly the same effect that we were getting with the uh, spotlight, you know, when we were doing that stencil, but you know, it's just using some very simple brushes and it's faster, right? It's faster than manually kind of having to place things over and over again. All right, so this is typically how I would go and, and, and get stuff. So again, you're kind of smoothing things, the light smooth, right? Don't over smooth it. And then you're just kind of going over it again. And then, you know, there's a little bit of back and forward, similar to what we did when with our sculpting. Maybe don't do it like a big smooth over everything, right? Just kind of go over, maybe with a smaller brush with the smooth. I'm just kind of dabbing, dabbing some spots. So some spots are still a bit more creased. Some might be a little bit more smooth. And again, we're gonna get a really good result. Now, if I want, say, some raised uh, bumps and things like that, Instead of this alpha, maybe I can go with like a like a spotted alpha. So it was like maybe this tiny little guy right here, right? He's going to give me like more kind of finer, finer indents. Or if I reverse the brush, you know, some raised, raised bumps, and you know, layering all this stuff, it starts making things look a lot more natural, right? Even for smooth surfaces, you're going to have like little imperfections because that's what's going to break up your specularity when you're uh, getting into getting into that uh, when you're getting into lighting and, and stuff like that like um, so you know I could go and smooth this up and start layering in things so you know there's more of a textural depth to it right doing it this way so this is good so this is more for if you have skin like say for example some of you have some underwater creatures which would be more skin like so you might want to get away with with this type of thing Right, there's a, some layering going on into it. Making sure that you do have some creases and stuff around the bending areas is very important still though. All right, so that's looking kind of neat. All right, so the next thing I wanted to look at um, is using the, 
uh, vector brushes, the vector displacement brushes. And I, I do have this link I'm gonna share with you guys right now. These are good, this pack is good. And now I could share this with you. I, I feel really guilty though, because it is on sale for only $3.38 Canadian. You know, it's less than a Starbucks coffee. And then you're supporting the artist that that created it, which is probably the best, the better thing to do, especially in these these hard times that we're all going through. Every little bit helps for everybody. So I, I would suggest, uh, you know, looking for something like this, or there's maybe some other good ones. I, I like this one just because it works really well, but I'm sure there's other ones you could uh, look for as well. So there, here's the link up here. You could always. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll just manually give it to you guys also. I'll just put it in the description of the YouTube video, I guess. Um, all right, so let's load that in. So I'm going to go to uh, Load Brush. So all you do is Load Brush, find out wherever you saved it off to. And I think I already did load it in right before we started here, but uh, I'll load it in again anyway. So I'm just going to navigate over to my, my brushes which are on my D drive under resources, ZBrush, and Dragon Reptile. There it is right here. It's a big, it's a big brush. The vector displacements are, are rather detailed, so you know it does take a little bit of time to load. Uh, I would not permanently load this in, just load it when you need it, basically. And this has some really good really good scales, uh, types of scales that we could use. So the first thing to do with this is, you know, well, just kind of explore what's there. Uh, so, you know, for a chameleon or a gecko, I know Yachi has this gecko, you know, the, these little kind of gecko-y spots are pretty good. So you can manually place them like this and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Just kind of going through and then kind of manually placing each one down. We're using this kind of rectangle uh, brush, which basically, you just kind of draw it out to whatever whatever size you need it to be. Now with a gecko, you know, primarily these spots are going to be fairly consistently the same size though. So, you know, this ends up looking a bit weird if you have things kind of random, too random over the surface. So you got to be careful with that. Uh, what I would do instead, what I would do instead is I would go into the... Um, If I could undo this, I should probably pause this while I'm undoing here. But I would go into Lazy Mouse. And Lazy Mouse isn't something we really looked at too too much, uh, although I, I may have mentioned it. Here, let me just go to my um, standard brush for a second. Uh, Lazy Mouse is just something you turn on under Stroke, and this is something you should probably add to your custom uh, shelf. Uh, so this one, the cavity mask, uh, is also another one you want to add to your custom shelf. Uh, and then these two, two sliders, the lazy mouse and these two sliders should be added. So there's a lazy mouse. Once that's on, uh, basically what it does is it, it leaves a trail behind your mouse. It's very similar to Photoshop's new smooth feature, which kind of copies this. Uh, whoops. Oh, I just click, quick save. Just give it a second. Uh, leaves a, a little line. So that line is determined by the lazy radius. So the higher that lazy radius, uh, the longer the line is. And you get like some really nice smooth uh, lines from that. Now let me undo that. Uh, I'm going to turn off RGB, turn on add. And just to give you an idea. So you get this kind of nice smoothish kind of line that, that gets drawn out. Now the longer the radius, the, the smoother the line, but you know, the longer it takes to, to do stuff here. Uh, so if I were to go over here, you know, you get this fairly long line. But the cool thing is, is that you can start going back to the beginning of the line without letting go. And you can create some neat angles and things like that. And you can, again, create very, very nice kind of fluid forms from that. So this is really good. Um, so I do want to make sure lazy mouth, mouse, lazy mouth, I have lazy mouth right now. Lazy mouse is on. Uh, I'm going to reduce the stroke down, but this is the important part if we're going to be using the, the um, vector displacements this way. So the higher this value, 
If I were to draw over this, see, it starts leaving these dots around. Now, this is actually a good thing you could do for creating uh, kind of uniform scales as well, right? If I were to increase that, I could start maybe making some dots this way, right? And, you know, as long as I'm careful, I can get some uh, fairly good, a fairly good result with that, actually. Right? And I could probably do this with uh, when I'm creating my, my, um, my mask, right? I could go into the lazy mouse and turn it on for the mask as well and, and then create some dots that way instead of a straight line. So the easiest way to do that would be to dock it though, right? So I would want to dock the stroke menu. And then with my mask held down, held down so that I've got control being held down, I can turn on lazy mouse and increase the step size here. So as I'm drawing this, right, I could start, you know, creating my masks this way, which could be easier to uh, inflate and do stuff that way. All right, but that, that's just an idea. Let me just get rid of lazy mouse on my, my mask. There we go. So let me go back over to that vector displacement uh, dragon brush, which ends up being at the very end here. And as I mentioned, I'm going to probably want to use dots. I'm going to want to use dots, right? So you can see here that I must have the stroke turn, or I must have, no, I don't have lazy mouse on. It's just automatically giving me some stuff. Now, this is what happens though, right? You end up getting stuff overlapping. And you know, that's actually kind of an interesting pattern that, that might actually work in some cases, right? That's kind of cool. But I, I probably don't want that. I want to be very specific. I want all this stuff to line up. So I just have to play around with the distance between each, each, uh, each dot, basically. And that's under this uh, lazy, uh, this option right here. So I'm going to go a little bit lower. Let's try it like around here. So that's pretty good. I might need to go a bit higher than that, though. So let's go 0 0.6 something. Almost there. Seven. That's pretty good. That's not too, too bad. So it's basically fairly. Now, if I go bigger though, then it's it's not so good. So depending on your brush size, right? You're gonna have to maybe tweak, tweak that a little bit. So maybe I'll go just a little bit lower again. It's like a lose-lose. I'll numerically put something in. Let's just try a 0.7. Um, that's, that's not too bad. Let's go 0.71. It's pretty close. And then what I could do then is I can start going over areas uh, with this, right? Maybe not so much on the face, <laughs> it doesn't look so good. And I'd probably want a smaller, you know, a smaller brush size for that, maybe. And I probably want to go in and mask off areas that, you know, I, I probably don't want to move so much. So like the eye where I, maybe I, I'm happy-ish with it, you know, I might want to revisit it depending on the shape of these scales. But you know, I might want to mask this off just so that I don't paint into it by accident. And then I can start filling in areas with these, these dots. Just following, again, very important to follow the surface of the of the um, of the object cool right and then we can very quickly start to fill fill things up here but I just got to be careful about your brush thickness because if it's too thick then you know it doesn't quite line up and I might go in and just reduce the overall uh, radius stroke
and maybe just play around with this a bit a bit more so point let's go back down to point here that seems okay all right so now we can start going in and playing around with with these these uh these dots So it's just a matter of figuring out like how, what size do I need them to be? He's a pretty big guy. And then just kind of going over, you know, row by row, following the surface. Now maybe this way might not be the best because I got a lot of these little lines going up, up and down this way. So maybe I want to follow the surface this way perhaps. All right, and I'm just going to go over. If I miss one, I can always go back in and do it by hand, right? It's not the end of the world if if I don't get full coverage, I could always just go back in and just do the odd little dot still by hand if I need to. And you know, there are missing scales. That's just part of life. Scales go missing, they get, uh, uh, you know, injured or they, or whatnot. Or maybe they just don't form properly. So that, that is something that happens. So, you know, if I, if I, if I'm missing something, I'll, I'll just go in and and hand do that. So this is coming pretty good. So again, this is a good one. You can always create your own vector displacement brushes similar to what I, I showed you guys. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, now there are there are different different ones to, to play around with. So, and they all work pretty good to be honest. Uh, again, it depends on, on the distance of your brush and the, the size of your brush Uh, in the direction you, you go with the brush. So remember, typically scales will angle down, but this looks pretty good, right? So you get like some cool scale patterns and things like that. So I can see this being really useful for for maybe Arthur's, uh, Arthur's creature, right? With that seahorse, so that one's pretty good. But remember, the, the distance is what, what matters. So you just gotta be careful with that, otherwise it becomes a bit of a jumbled, jumbled mess or maybe too much of a gap in between each each stroke. Now I am really high up, so it does take a little bit of time to undo. So it really depends on your on your computer as well. But this that that's looking pretty cool. So just watch out for the jumbly bits because then it starts not looking so good. So you do have to be careful with the with the coverage there. So that one's kind of neat. I'm just gonna go through these, see where we how we can use some of these. Uh, this one's also a good one, right? So this one's pretty good as well. Um, but again, I, I probably want to play around with my play around with the overall spacing of that. But that looks actually not too bad, right? It's very, it's very good actually. So that's a good one. Uh, what's this guy? This guy's okay. It's, this one's a little bit more like a rock pattern, right? Something like this, which is okay. But again, you, you're going to definitely want to. Um, I, I don't like that one as much, to be honest, but you will need to play with the, the distance of it. And it becomes that back and forward of, until you get something just right. So that one's kind of interesting, but again, I, I wouldn't use that for me, but it might be kind of cool for some of your projects. Uh, now this one's kind of good, right? So again, this is Depends on your angle. So this one's a good one for maybe the forearms or something like that. And again, the spacing. See how much extra, it looks almost like one of those cyber scans though, right? Because of the detail we had added on the forehand. So it looks like there's little scratches and things like that in there. So that actually does a good job with that. So let me just decrease this distance though a bit. There we go, that was pretty good. All right, so we get some cool scales going down the forearms. All right, so that's looking pretty good. All right, you don't have to go full intensity either, right? You can kind of vary the brush size so that things get bigger or, or smaller depending on how much you push down on the brush, All right? So you can get some nice variance in through there. So that one, that's a good one.
What else is a good one here? Let's see here. Uh, so these are good for, for things like uh, the forearms and things like that as well, or around the, the, the nails and things like that. So you get like that kind of uh, alligator or bird pattern that starts to form, which is really good. You know, you might need to mask out some of the side area or kind of work it back in, right? So there's still some manual work that you would need to do uh, with some of these brushes, but you know, it gets you there faster, which is, which is nice. That's all pretty good. Uh, let me just go in and, and erase some of this and, uh, or you know what, I could just go down here. So that one looks pretty good, right? For, that's, that's almost exactly like the ostrich scan from the texture XYZ, which is what I wanted to use on this. So that, that works actually quite, quite well. Uh, but again, the spacing, just you have to double check the spacing. And this one here is very similar to that one, uh, but it's just a little bit more compacted. So again, very, it works very well, right? Just make sure that you know it looks natural enough when you're doing this. If you're going to use any of these, but that's that's kind of an interesting, interesting effect in through there. So that's kind of cool. And I should point out we can always create our own. So if you wanted something very very specific, it's easy to create your own here. Uh, we got this one. This one's kind of good as well, just for doing kind of an overall scale. So instead of using this kind of approach here you know, we could do more of, of this type of thing, right? Just gotta watch out to make sure you don't get doubling up in some of these, these areas. So making sure again that, that the spacing is, is enough. That's too much. That's still too much. I guess that was pretty close to where it was before, but okay. So, you know, you get. A pretty good result through this as well. For the for the more consistent now you know if you're getting a little bit of overlap here there you can always go in and refine that and uh, you know if you need to you could always go in and, and smooth things down a bit as well uh, so you know you got your H polish so I could go in and start flattening things up just a bit if I needed to although you know maybe I wouldn't so much because I was actually looking pretty good or, you know, we've got the layer, right? That layer that we have. So we could always go in with the layer and just reduce the, oops, reduce the layer down. So, you know, if I were to bring it down to like half. So if I were to bring it down to half, is it gonna work for me? There we go. It's just gonna be a bit slow because we are dealing with a lot of dealing with a lot of um, polys. I'm not sure what's, looks like a color thing. Let me just turn that off. All right, so that's looking pretty good, right? So it's it's there, uh, but it's a bit more a bit more subdued. So it really depends on how how uh, dense you want those scales to be, I guess. which is you want them there, you want them pronounced, but you don't necessarily want them to overpower the, the overall look of the entire sculpt, right? Cool, so we looked at manually doing some things. So just to walk through in the last 10 minutes, the VDM creation in case you want to create your own, let's, let's do this one more time. All right, so I'm going to go over to my cylinder and I'm going to add in a um, just a plane. If I can, there we go, 
just a plain 3D. There you are. And what I want to do is I just want to paint in the area or just mask off the interior. Now before I do that, I'm just going to subdivide. Now if you're going to do a couple of these of your own, uh, you just want to duplicate it a few times. So uh, maybe I'll do it after this. So let me subdivide it. So one, two, three, four, maybe one more time. I got a million. I'm going to duplicate it a couple times here. So maybe twice. All right. And I'm going to start by just masking out the area where I'm going to be painting in. Very important. It's very, very important to make sure the edging stays the way it is right now. Otherwise, you do get these seams that show up, which is not good. <laughs> not, not good at all. So let me just go over and, and just kind of there. This doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you have a bit of a, a space there. All right. So I'm going to invert that. All right. So if I. If I want to, I could go in and create my own um, my own shapes here. So I'm going to do this, maybe starting with my my clay brush. And you could also create your own little masks and things like that, like what I was doing before, right? So I could go in and, and create kind of a, a pattern. my own pattern maybe I want maybe some variants in, in some of these redo this one here So I've got something that's kind of something that's kind of cool. And then I can do what I did before by just inflating this. So this time I'm uh, definitely using the inflate brush just so that I am affecting only the interior area here. And you know what? Let me undo that because I, I do have some, some separation I need to do here. So we got something a bit more, more unique. That could be a cool pattern. And then I'm going to inflate this again, just the interior part though. Maybe smooth it up just a bit. size differences. Maybe these guys are going to be a bit bigger. There we go. That's pretty, pretty close. I could always go in and uh, go with my high poly, my high polish, and just kind of go over a couple of these as well. Maybe not that much. It was actually looking a bit better before. Maybe undo a couple times. I 
think I, I, I squished it too much. Made it too squishy. Indeed, it wasn't working. Anyhow, let's say this is good. Let's pretend this is good. You can spend as much time or as little time on these, right? You want to get it as good as you can. Um, you know, I've got some areas there that could be a bit better. Maybe I'll use my damn standard. Just to go in, maybe add in the other little crack and crease and things like that, um, which I need to reset this brush. The brush at the bottom, we've got reset current brush. There we go. Cool. I can just go in and start, you know, just adding in. Some slight variants. Oh, there's going to be a problem here, so just got to be careful with that stuff. Cool. Now let's see what we get. So I'm just make sure it's flat to camera, exactly like this. Flat to camera. And we're going to go into a brush. So I'm going to go into Chisel or Chisel 3D. Either of these do a pretty good job. Uh, chisel 3D maybe, and I'll, I'll duplicate it. So I'm going to go into my brush setting. So I guess I've torn it off already. So I'm going to uh, clone this. So clone. Now I've got two of these. There it is, Chisel 3D1. That's what I'm on. Uh, I could also go through and just remove the stuff that's on there. So I can do that under the, uh, which one is that? Create, yes, create. And if I delete mesh, so this is just on the clone. So I'm just going in through and removing the ones that are there. And what I want to do is I want to create, start creating and adding to this new one here. So I'm going to go in and from mesh. And there we go. So now we've got a a brush here that has this kind of pattern. Now, you know, I wasn't very careful because I can see there's this repeating bit up here. Uh, so you know, you just got to be careful when you're when you're doing that to make sure that looks pretty good. So if I were to go back over to my um, my creature, right? I can start using my own my own creation here. So I've got my chisel brush. Again, I'll probably go over to um, dots. Now what's this uh, mesh has poly paint layer. Oh, you know what? I've got to turn my layer back on again. So let me go back down here and push record. Just give it a second because it's a big file. And I can start going in and, and using this new one I just created. So it's the same thing though, right? So I've got to go into my stroke. Just make sure that uh, lazy mouse is on, and I've got a good a good distance, which is that's way too much. It's really a it's really a fine tuned thing. Point point seven. It's funny. Point seven was too much. Five, let's go down to point four. There we go. And I can start going in and adding in my own scales this way, right? So it's very easy to to kind of create your own unique patterns that way. Like it could be skin wrinkles, it doesn't have to be scales, it could be anything. Um, you know, so as I mentioned, those dragon ones are really good, but you know, maybe I want to add in my own ones for the feet, uh, you know, like the ostrich type of uh, thing, maybe something a bit more, a bit more specific, perhaps. So I can go back over here and I create all these duplicates. So maybe this time I'll be a little bit more, a little bit more uh, specific here. So what I can do is, again, I'm just going to mask off the area. And through here. I just want to create kind of a, an ostrich pattern here. 
Now, it could just be one, a single thing too that we just end up repeating, right? So we could do maybe something a bit more like, maybe one or two, one or two maybe. And then I can be a bit more specific. I can start getting stuff that the other one didn't have, right? If I do it myself. So maybe a little bit of dots on either side or, or you know, some additional little, little patterns here and there. You get the idea. So let me just let me just do a little bit more here. Cool. And then what I can do is maybe not inflate. Maybe I'll, I'll do something a bit more sculptural this time. So using the um, clay buildup, perhaps. change the alpha maybe I can go in and uh, maybe flatten some of this smooth it up a bit some uh, cracks and things maybe I don't know let's see this is the uh, damn standard and again this is very quick but you know and then what I can do is uh, create a new brush so I'm still on my, go back to my chisel brush that I created, chisel, chisel one, I should probably have labeled that. And I could just add a new mesh. So go back to my brush from mesh, there we go. So I'm gonna save this off, I, just in case it crashes, I don't wanna lose these because these are looking pretty good so far. And I've got my ZBrush brushes, let me just put these under Chimera for now, the Chimera. Yeah, let's see. Let's put them in here. So I'll call it um, Alien VDM. All right. So if I go back over to my Alien, all right. So instead of using the ones that I got here, I could maybe erase these ones with my um, uh, whoops, sorry, BMO. I'm gonna erase these ones. Oops, I've got my morph morph brush. I can just erase those down. And I can use my, my new one. So here they are right here. So let's try it out. Cool. Right, so it's got all the little details that I would want in there. Uh, but you know, maybe maybe it's a little bit too uh, not spaced well enough. So it's the same thing. Like every brush, it depends on how well it fills in the uh, 
Yeah, yeah so I, maybe let's go back to 0.7. That's not too much. It's funny. Now that I scaled my brush, it's probably too much. Almost there. So somewhere between 0.65 maybe. Cool. Perfect. All right. So now I've got the, these new brushes that have all these extra little details around each each piece. So you know, if you're more detailed, you know, it could just be as detailed as any. Um, any image that you got maybe from texture x x texture xyz once you start combining them with, with some of the other brushes that we, we were playing around with like some of these these guys right so we can start uh, playing around and uh, combining things to start kind of building things out Cool. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff to start looking into. You can get fairly detailed uh, results this way. Uh, you can get probably most of the way there without even going into Substance Painter, which is again something we're going to look at after after the break. But don't do any of this until you've actually gone through and and retopologized and done your UV maps. All right, so that's, that's some good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. And I think that should be enough information for you guys to get going with what you need to do. Okay, talk to you later, bye.